I heard you talk about one of the very important things that uh, we have to do in order to build up the confidence, and that's confession. Uh, you say one of the things that you like you to build the confidence that God really loves you. You wake up and confess it in the morning and say, "I, the Lord loves me. It is well with me. Everything is going to be fine." Um, I, that's one of the greatest things that I've picked from what you shared. But uh, would you talk more about this confession, how it affects our confidence? Okay. It's, it's more, I would say, it's a declaration. Declare. It's declared basically from the Bible. But you don't have to say, now you can say, quote the Bible verse, but you can just quote the concept. It's God loves me. God sees that I'm important and really believe that. Now, now I, I, I want to ask you to imagine if one day you have a chance to go to heaven. Now, there are so many, many Christians have a chance to go to heaven. And then they saw Jesus, they saw God, they saw the angels, and then God says something to them. You are very special to me and you're going to do something great for me. And then if you hear that, imagine, you hear that from God directly. And then when you come back, you know, and God said, in the future, you're going to do something great. When you come back, will you have more confidence? Let me ask you. Yeah. Now, you haven't heard that. You said, I haven't been to heaven and I haven't heard that. But that doesn't matter because the Bible has already said that. Yeah. The Bible has said that we are very important. God remembers us us all the time and he's in front of us and behind us he's laying his hand upon us he cares about us he has a wonderful plan in our life so all this we can let it sink in our mind it takes time to really have it sink in our mind so every day when you confess that and from morning to night time now I do that many times a day when I'm walking when I'm washing dishes and when I'm uh, taking a shower I would keep saying hallelujah the Lord loves me that's, I call it the prayer of grace. It's from God to us. God loves me. God cares about me. God blesses me. God has a wonderful plan. And then my response, my prayer of worship. I love you, Lord. I need you. I want you. I hold on to you. So both ways. And also every time I pray, I add this. When I pray, God is very happy and God is smiling and God will respond. Now this is what the Bible says. When we come to close to Him, He'll come close to us too. And then in Psalm 91, it says that because He loves me, therefore I will put Him in a high place. I will exalt Him. So the Bible has said that if someone loves Him and if someone is, you know, is rejoices in the Lord, the Lord will answer his wishes, his prayers. So the Lord will honor all these people. So every day I will keep declaring that and I keep believing that when I pray, God is very happy. When I serve God, God is very happy. When I, even when I talk, you know, Zech, uh, in Zechariah it talks about God listen to his people when they discuss. It's, it's very wonderful. You know, we say, who are we? What we say is not perfect compared to what God says. But God is happy. He will listen. It's like you're listening to your child. Many parents don't listen to the child. But then God listens to your children. So, so keep declaring this. It will, and, and so that you can be happy. And then you can say, I can be happy because God likes me. And God is happy too. You know, God is a happy God. It, People go to heaven and also the description of heaven. Jesus said you can come and enter the master's happiness. So heaven is full of happiness. Even though God is very busy, but he is very happy. Okay. Anything you want to respond or ask? The point is, how can you apply it to your life? So you can ask me how you, if you have difficulty. Yes. Um, what I wanted to ask is uh, sometimes you can be confident let's say but then when you talk to certain people or someone could make a statement that demotivates you or causes you to panic and then you lose your confidence in an instant so how do you deal with that instantly how do you deal with that pressure okay now this is something very real in ministry 
when I when I do evangelism, do you think more people reject me or more, more people accept me? More people reject me. Yeah. For anyone who does evangelism, it's the same. And God has taught me this. God has told me, you know, actually after I experienced the Holy Spirit, I found, I pay attention to how God speaks to me. And when I do evangelism, when the person rejects, I find that I feel a little pressure in my heart. I feel a little unhappy. And then I get the message from God, I have to take care of that. If every time I, you know, person rejects me, I feel unhappy, and then the unhappiness will become so strong. So what, is, what, what God told me is this, this concept. This person, I try to evangelize, and he doesn't believe. And one day when we go to heaven, God will say to this person, my servant has spoken to you, but you don't believe. But what I said to this person will glorify God. God will have said, yes, you have spoken to this person. Now, if someone comes to heaven, and then, of course, God has revealed himself in the society because there is Christmas message, Easter messages, and also Christian messages people have heard. But they might not have heard a personal message from God. And then if no one has witnessed to Him personally, it doesn't glorify God. So God told me, every time when I witness to someone, God is happy. And it glorifies God. And God will reward me even though I haven't brought that person to Jesus. He will reward us even though that person hasn't believed. That's one one way to think about it, that God is happy with that and God will reward me. The second thought is, people have negative thinking. People have sin. Now this includes in our daily relationship with people and include when we do evangelism, people will reject us or say negative things. Every day we hear negative things from people all the time. Now, let me ask you this. This negative things, where does it come from? Does it come from God? No. No. Where does it come from? The devil. Yeah, from the devil or come of his sinful nature. So it's something not good. So it's something bad. Let me ask you. If someone hand you a bowl of good food and then another bowl of trash, <laughs> which one do you want to eat? Good food. The good food. But let me tell you, many people eat the garbage. When people say good things to them, I care about you, can I help you? They don't respond. But when people yell at them, they remember days and days and months and years. <laughs> they are doing kind of bad things. Yeah, right. <laughs> because people think it's unfair. But when, when it's unfair, and then they keep thinking about it. We have a habit of eating garbage. And God has taught me this. God has gave, given me many teachings. I thank God for that. Don't eat garbage. And we don't have to feel bad if people speak to us negatively. If people speak to us negatively, I discern it. If I have anything wrong, I ask for forgiveness. If I don't, I will just say, it's okay. And I can say positive things back to him. He said, you're dumb. I, I, I can say, okay, thank you for reminding me. Please help me. If you can help me to be smarter, uh, I'll pay attention to that. Try to be try to be in a way smarter than he in a way I can accept his words in a gentle way that way I'm smarter than he but I'm not out I'm not trying to step on him I'm just trying to not to offend him I want to say something nice not to offend him but at the same time I carry on the conversation and I I make him not to feel bad but I know that what he said is bad I don't want to take it I just won't, you know, when I turn around, I forget about it. I just put it down. So when people reject it, we say, yeah, that's an unpleasant experience, but that came from his sin. He rejects me. Or he says something like, ah, oh, you, you Christians always evangelize to us. Ah, you, you, you know, you talking too much, you know, say things like that. We, I don't have to take it. So, so. So when we know that we don't have to take garbage and then we can uh, say God remembers me, then we can handle that. Then, and then we say, and then we can build up the confidence. I have done it again. Even though the person rejects, God is happy with me. I've done it again. Thank God for that. So 
whatever happens, I always want to build up my confidence in God. I was always, uh, uh, I would always say something like, God is happy with me. God is helping me. God will remember what I've done for Him. So, does it help you? Okay. Yeah. Anyone? Huh? Not eating garbage is very important. Yeah, right. <laughs> and, and this is a very simple teaching. It helps you for your whole lifetime. If you stop eating garbage, if you discern, actually some people, they keep sending out garbage. Now, we, we love them. We care about them. But we don't want to take the garbage. We know that when they talk, most likely they will speak garbage. But we don't. We, we won't tell them that it, this is garbage. We just understand, discern, keep it to ourselves, and then I don't have to take it. Yeah. Okay. Any anything else? Now this is something for you to build up every day. It doesn't build up instantly, but even tonight, your self confidence can increase not just one percent. It can increase thirty percent, forty percent when you say to yourself. I'm loved by God. I can improve. Let me ask you this. It will encourage you. Have you improved since you became a Christian? Have you improved? Yeah. So you tell yourself, I have improved. And I keep improving. I'll keep growing. So keep appreciating yourself and appreciating your growth. That's something I always tell people. You know, some people said, they ask me, how come... You know, the deliverance is not complete yet. I asked them, has, has the deliverance helped you already? Now, for some people, because they cannot handle the negative emotions and, and, and you know, all the negative subconscious mind, so the deliverance is not complete. So they said, how come it's not complete yet? I said, has it, have you improved? They said, yes. Then I said, congratulate yourself. You have improved. And you keep asking God, and then you keep having a good relationship with God and keep handling the garbage in your life and then you keep improving. So you have improved, you will continue to improve. So have the habit of congratulating yourself. This is not pride. It's saying, thank God, I have grown in the Lord. The Lord has helped me. We give glory to God. God has helped me to improve. And I have responded to God. I thank God that I have improved at the, at, because God has helped me and I responded to His advice and I am improving now thank God for that so we can be happy of our growth that way you say oh, thank God I'm growing that now you notice when I talk it's all positive so learn to speak positive to yourself if you speak positively to yourself tonight you can improve jump up 30% <laughs> suddenly your confidence can rise thank you Pastor Yip. Um can there be a scenario where you're overconfident? Like uh, you probably are a little bit too self self worthy, like uh, and, and and you probably step on people's toes. Uh, I don't know how I can express this. Is there anything like superiority complex? Yes, like when you feel you know you're yeah. you're above everyone sometimes. Now you notice that every time I said something that God has done for me, I said, God does it when we come to Him. And you can do, you can do that too. And I always say to people, you know, I, I share with them. Now when we share how God uses us, it's right when we give the glory to God in our heart and in our words. <coughs> that we're not proud of ourselves, we just say, it's God who does it. So I'm very happy God is doing it. And I always tell people, you can do it too. So I'm giving the glory to God. And also important is in my heart, I'm giving the glory to God. Now God has taught me this. When I pray for people, I've seen people experience the Holy Spirit. There has been times that I get proud. But then God reminded me with this teaching. We are all building on the foundation of God. We're building up like a wall. And then if we are proud, we're tearing it down. So do you build a building like that? You build, and then you tear down. Next day you build, you tear down. We don't build like that. So I remind myself, when I say it, what God has done and God, how God has honored me, I would say, you know, the Bible does say that He will give us glory too and honor too when we follow Him. 
that's not wrong. But we give the glory to God. It's God who changed me. I always say, I'm not worthy of all these changes. It's God who changed me. And we can always say that, you know, in, in my, our heart, we always say, it's God who give us, give it to us. And so I thank God for that. So now, what I want to say is, we have confidence in God and not in myself. And, and then I can keep telling myself, I can fail, I can do something wrong, and then God corrects me. You know, it's possible. It, it happens again and again. But I want to be humble and to say, Lord, help me to be humble. And But we should not stop sharing what God has done in our lives. You know, when I name these incidents, when God helps me, it's God's work. I have no right to keep it secret. So when I say it, I'm saying, I want to see all of you have these experiences. So that's, it's not saying I'm more superior. I'm saying anyone following God is superior. It's very important to follow God. I see that, you know, I want to follow God 100%. I don't want to follow God percent, just part of my life. Because if I follow, if one, I have 1% sin, the 1% sin can destroy my life. So anything that affects me, I don't want it to stay in my life. I want to follow Him totally. I want to glorify Him totally. Okay? Did I answer your question? Yeah. That So it's a balance. It's about How we share what God has done at the same time you say is God's glory. And, and God chose me when I was weak and sinful. It's not because I, I was good. And I want to give glory to God that He has changed me like this. I really thank God for that. The main thing is, you know, I've, I've seen people who are proud. For instance, they look for results. I've seen people who pray for people, they push people to fall down. It, because then they're looking for results. And <laughs> in their own way. In their own, in their own way. way. Yeah, in their own way. Yeah. So when we pray for people, it doesn't matter if nothing happens. I can be very peaceful. It doesn't matter. And if something happens, I give glory to God. I thank God. So we can have this this balance at the same time is very 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 full of confidence in God not in myself that I can fail and I always say my teachings came from God it's God who taught me this and I thank God for that it's not because I'm good okay it is sincere from my heart I, I really sincerely uh, think that way and I always say it that way okay say something about confidence yeah uh, we talked about confidence and i wanted to comment uh, there are times when we know something and uh, because we know that we know we become more confident uh, that we do not give we do not leave a gap uh, for anything other than what we know so we become so confident and Yet sometimes what we know is not the ultimate thing. Yeah, what would you comment? Yeah, I agree with you. Agree. So I agree that we always say, Lord, please guide me. I can be wrong. That, mm. that, that give me the wisdom. But also at the same time, I believe that we have the mind and the, uh, we have the soul, spirit and the soul. Mm. That we don't just work with the spirit. You know, many Christians just say, okay, spiritually I feel this. But then we have the mind and the will and the feeling. God works in this area too. And in the, uh, in the Bible, we can see that the writer, like Paul, he does use the mind too. So we, it's just the mind is controlled by God. Okay, okay. Um, anything else? I can move on to communication if you don't have anything more. The main thing is, do you think you can start to work on your self-image so that you can become more confident that you can be confident to overcome certain barriers be confident to talk to strangers now I'm going to talk about the skills but first this confidence that in yourself that is something it takes time to build up okay. so okay so I now if no one want to ask any questions I'll go, go on to communication now for communication, the first thing we want to work on is listening. Listening. 
Um, we want to listen to the content. We want to watch the person's expression. We want to listen to the tone of voice. We want to listen to the difficulties, the content of what he said, and also the feeling behind it, his difficulties and needs and feelings. All this we want to listen. This is something very difficult. In, in communication, this is the most difficult part. And I thank God for my wife. Now, we both have been trained in some way in counseling. Um, I've learned a lot. Uh, I had gone through it. You know, I have gone through uh, counseling courses in the seminary, but those really don't help me too much. I have one year of chaplaincy training. That's what helped me a lot. In a chaplaincy training, because the teacher always confront our feelings, and then he guided us in the, uh, our communication and our feelings and our, uh, our interaction. And uh, all this is very helpful. And so I, I start to listen to people's feelings, but I found that I miss it many times. My wife is my great help. When I want to see someone, someone important, I try to uh, uh, arrange it at a time when she can come also. And then when she comes back home, now she's very humble. Most of the time she would not say anything different from what I say in front of the person. And, and then she would decide whether she needs to say anything. Sometimes she would say something, but sometimes she won't. She wait until we come home and then she will ask me, uh, what did you hear? And then she would tell me more things that, you know, more than what I've heard. That she said, she had heard this, heard that, heard that. And I was really amazed. <laughs> now, as a woman, women generally hear more. <coughs> She's also a very wise woman. And, and, and she told me why I could not listen so well. Because when I listen, I have my own agenda. <laughs> I have my own point of view. And so when I, want to, when I listen, I try to change the person. I try to deny the person or try to, you know, that has happened so many times. And she said, when I'm counseling someone unrelated to my problems, my needs, I'm more objective. I can listen to the person. I can respond to the person's feeling more. But if that person is saying something against me, then I have a tendency to defend. And when she told me that, I start to pay more attention to that. So this is something we really need um, to learn. Um, now, I want to say this. In order to do this, probably we need to do it in the few days of the exercise. Because uh, in the exercise time, we'll have someone say something. And then we'll all listen and see how much we pick up. You would be surprised how many people did not hear the feeling behind that it's it's uh it's something you want to listen you start to listen more attentively now right now i'm not going to do exercise because if i do an exercise it will take too long but when we listen we ask ourselves this question it would be very helpful if i were him or her how would I feel? For instance, someone says, uh, something just happened to my family. And then we just say, if this thing happened to my family, how would I feel? How would it affect me? And then if I think, you know, feel with the person and find out more about his feeling or his thinking, uh, and then we can understand more. So if we put ourselves in his shoes, that's the first thing. And then when we hear that, we will say, how does it feel? How does he feel? And then we try to respond to the feeling first before asking more questions and before we giving more teaching. For instance, um, if someone says, ministry is difficult, we have a tendency to say, well, by the help of God, it's not so difficult. Let me ask you, what is this? We say, with the help of God, ministry is not difficult. 
when we say that, what are we doing? We are teaching. When someone says ministry is difficult, he's opening, opening himself, himself, and seeing his difficulty. And instead of responding to how to improve, we have a tendency to respond to how to improve. We can respond to his feelings. Let me ask you now, if someone says, oh, ministry is difficult, how can we respond? <clears throat> can you respond right now? Yes. Try to respond. Yeah. One of them, uh, I think the first response, I'll ask the question, how difficult is the ministry? Anyone else? Now, I think, uh, probably you could uh, tell him. Yeah, I do understand. It's, it's, sometimes it gets to be difficult. Okay, very good. So, now that is responding more to the feeling. But now to use the word understand, we have to be careful. Because sometimes people say, you don't really understand. Because my situation is different from yours. But we can say, I know it's difficult. I know it. you feel Maybe, um, you know, it makes you feel uh, difficult and make you feel heavy now. Maybe, you know, so we name the feeling. We accept the feeling first before we find out more. I know it's hard in ministry. I know it could make you feel burdened and heavy. And so that's responding to the feeling. Why is it important to do that? Now this is helpful in evangelism too. When we talk with people, if someone says, I don't, I don't like Christians. Most Christians will respond like this. Why don't you like Christians? Christians are nice, you know. We try to defend. There might be bad Christians, but I'm a good Christian. There are many good Christians. But instead, can we respond to his feeling? Anyone say, if someone says, I've been hurt by Christians, how can we respond to his feelings? We can say, you know, basically we are feeling the person's feeling and agreeing with the person. And, and then we can say, I'm sorry. First thing we can say, I'm sorry that you've been hurt by some Christians. And, I know it hurts. We don't have to defend being Christian. When we do this, actually he will say, Wow, well, here's a Christian who hears my feelings. It doesn't mean that I agree with him, Christians are wrong. I'm just saying that Christian hurts you. I'm sorry about that. And I, I know that it hurts you, it, it can hurt you. That's responding to feelings. Let me ask you, why is it important to respond to feelings? Now you can come closer, that way it's easier to pass the microphone. Now, come I, closer. I think the reason why we should respond to the feelings is so that we can empathize with the person and uh, yeah. relate much uh, more with right. the person. Yeah, right. right. So the person feels accepted. Feel accepted. Feel that you hear him. That you're not just correcting him. That there is a connection there because he's opening himself up, his feelings, his needs. And then we connect to that instead of teaching. You know, in my uh, chaplaincy year, I learned a lot. One teacher, you know, uh, I, I had two teachers. They both want us to do uh, the verbatim. That means sentence by sentence record of the visitation. And the second teacher, he told us to do this. The first teacher told us to write down, you know, what we think, what we did, uh, how we did, how we did, and, res and respond, writing down the person's feeling and how we did. But the second teacher told us to do this. When we respond, write down the nature of our response. We might be teaching, we might be denying what he said, we might be teaching, 
we might be uh, uh, pushing him to do something now. What, what I mean is like this. When we say, um, for instance, one time, uh, uh, one of the chaplains visited a patient, and the patient said, oh, I have a lot of pain. And the chaplain said, um, well, when you take the medicine, you won't have the pain. What is he, what was he doing? Let me ask you, what was he doing? Uh, he was not teaching, he was not teaching. When you have the, now you can say it's teaching, teaching him to take the medicine. But he say, when you take the medicine, you won't have the pain. Prescribing? Prescribing. Prescribing, yeah, that's prescribing. And also, uh, it's prescribing a solution. And also, it can be denying. It, not, not facing it. He said he has pain, and he's not facing it. Okay, you, the doctor will help you, no problem. But how can we respond when someone says, I'm in pain? How can we respond? It basically is agreeing with the person. And you think, imagine you were the one in pain. How can, what can we say? Sorry. Sorry, Sorry. yes. Sorry. And then, what else? We're praying with you. We are praying with you. We're praying with you. Yeah. Okay. Probably how long have you had the pain? Okay. Now that's what is that? What is that? When you are saying how long? Uh, how long have you had the pain? You're trying to find out. Yeah. So what is that? Uh, that is finding out. Finding out. Okay. I'm I'm talking about responding to feeling. Mm. Basically, it's agreeing. Yes and no. It's not easy when it, it's painful. Yeah. It hurts you, right? Does it hurt you? How does it hurt? So now the, that was a question after that. But then first we agree, it's painful. Now you try this with the people you around you, when they say they are unhappy. When but don't say it more serious than than what they say. Like if someone says I'm unhappy. Oh, you're depressed. You know, <laughs> you might disagree. I'm not depressed. I'm just unhappy today. <laughs> so don't make it more serious. But we can just say, Oh, I'm sorry to hear that you're unhappy today. It, uh, you know, it's not a good feeling. So we can agree. Now let me ask you: Have you had people agree with you when you express your feeling before? Have you had this experience before? When you say about uh, uh, share what uh, your difficulties, what do most people do, especially Christians? When you say you have some difficulties, what do most people do? especially Christians, what do they do to you most of the time? You need to go before the first, you need to seek God more. Right. So what is that? What is that when you say that? When the person says that, what is that? It's like you're advising the person. You're teaching. You're teaching, teaching the person. Yeah. It's teaching and also another thing. Avoiding. You're yeah. trying to, to, to avoid the person Okay. Okay. It's teaching and also it could be accusing. The person could take an accusing message because you're saying you're not praying enough. Now you come oh, to God to yeah. pray. So when we tell people to pray, now, now this is the way I encourage people to, you know, to how to lead people to pray. Instead of just telling people what to do, what to do is the law. Use the grace. God knows your needs. Now, first we respond to the feeling. I know it's difficult. I know it's not easy. And when I know this, I feel sad for you. And God knows it, and He feels sad for you too. And He cares about you. He wants you, you to be blessed. And He has a lot of blessing. He will help you. When you come to Him, when you ask God, please give me strength. Or when you praise Him and love Him, He will give you strength. So I'm motivating people to pray with the grace of God. And, and that way, people feel much better. You know, God knows your needs. God wants to help you. And God has a lot of strength. When you come to Him and say, Lord, help me, and then you just love Him, God, and then God will come to you. So that's motivating people to pray. And I motivate people to read the Bible like this. You know, the Bible has many promises. When we know these promises, when we have difficulties, we know how to hold on to the promises of God. And we know what to, you know, how to trusting God and how to ask for help. So 
you know, to read the Bible is really helpful so that in difficult times we can hold on to it. And, and then for myself, I went through many difficult times and in those times, I remember the promises of God. I keep holding on to the promises of God. And, and when I keep trusting in God, God eventually helped me. Actually, in the process, He helped me. But eventually, He solved the problem. So, instead of teaching, and uh, some people would be accusing or confronting. Now, if we can listen and respond to the feelings, it's already very, very good. So, try to do this with your family members, with your friends. Try to do this. And we can do practice with this too when we have time. And then, how do we go further? We go further now. If it's a Christian, we can guide or explore. These are two very helpful ways. Instead of teaching, we can say, what do you think are some ways to solve this problem? Yeah. For instance, someone says, I'm very sad. I'm saying, you know, oh, I know it's very difficult for you. I know it makes you feel unhappy. And uh, you can tell me about it, what, what happened. And the person tell, tell us about it. And then we'll say, um, uh, how do you feel in this situation? Do you want to change? And how do you think you can change? And have you tried any way? And does it work? And what are some of the ways you think you can solve this problem? <clears throat> so let guide the person to think and to find ways. Now if the person could not find a way, then you say, can I give you a suggestion? And then, and then, um, and then we can give a suggestion. And do you think you can apply it? Now you notice in the process, I use a lot of questions instead of saying what to do. I use a lot of questions to guide him, to explore with him. Explore means it's like we don't know the answer. We try to go into a place and try to find an answer or to guide him. Guide him means he's here. I want to guide him there. But today I won't be able to guide him all the way. I will guide him one step at a time, gradually. Like if a couple come to you and they, they're fighting, they're hating each other. Now, I, I have an experience with a pastor on time. He, he uh, let me teach counseling. And then he said, I have a couple, I'd like you to counsel. Uh, they're not coming to church and they're fighting. And I hope you counsel them and then they come to church. <laughs> so they're here, they're fighting. And they hope I counsel them and then counsel them to come to church. Now, to me, that's very ambitious. That's a big, big step. So I listen to both of them. When I listen to both the husband and wife, I, I empathize with both of them. I know it's difficult in marriage. You know, like wives find a husband don't talk to them, don't respond to them much. And a husband find a wife talk too much. Generally, that's how in many marriages. So I listen to the wife and say, oh, that's difficult for you. I know it's not easy. And when the husband talks and then I say, yes, I know it's not easy. So it's very difficult for both of you. And so, and then I try to find out, okay, so do you think uh, that um, your marriage has a future? Do you, do you see that the other person has good qualities? Is it possible? So I guide them step by step. Do you think there is a way to improve? And then they say, yes, there's a way to improve. And then, so I guide them step by step. But the pastor was impatient. And then he said, and then he stepped in and he said, okay, come back to church today. Now go home tonight and pray. And then forgive each other. And then come back to church next week. And, and then after the session is over, I, I, I talked with the pastor. I, th I thought about it for a while. How can I talk with this pastor about his way of counseling? And... Um, because I was counseling first, but then he interrupted, and then he started to tell them, okay, go home and pray for each other, and then forgive, and then ask for forgiveness, and go come to church next week. <laughs> now, do you think they would do it? I don't think they would do it. And because he was not responding to the condition and to the needs. And, and then um, I, I discussed with the pastor and discussed with him the difference between teaching and, and guiding. But he said, I still think as a pastor I should teach. I said, yes, we should teach. But when they're not ready, it's hard to teach. They, they just won't listen. But then the next day, on that day, he did not agree with me. But the next day, he agreed with me. Because he said, last night, my mother called me. 
And when my mother called me, he kept telling me, son, you have to do this. You have to pay attention to this. You have to do this and do that. And then he, he said to his mother, mother, I'm already an adult and I'm a pastor. I know how to do it. And you don't have to keep telling me. <coughs> and then next day he told me, pastor, now I understand you. When my mother keep telling me what to do, I felt turned off. I don't like to listen to her. And that now I understand, when I keep telling people what to do, it, it can pre create an opposite effect. So instead of telling what people what to do to guide them, for instance, we do evangelism. Now, of course, first we want to start a conversation. Sometimes we can start with, you know, have you thought about God? It's better to start with a question. If you start with, uh, um, believe in Jesus, you have eternal life, you know, then you're just telling him something. He, he won't, probably he won't be interested. But if we, we can ask a question, you know, um, we can start with, now I have a track like this. The track has different problems of people, like sleeplessness, depression, unhappiness, relational problem, work problem, different problem, and how God can help us. That's, you know, I can send you the, I have it on the, my phone too, uh, to show you, but it's, it's Chinese, you can make an English one. So it starts with the needs of people, and then we can relate to the person, and then if the person says, yes, I have sleeping problem, I have emotional problem, now he's opening up, if some people are willing to open up. And then we can um, uh, listen, you know, say, oh, I know it's not easy to have this problem, and then, uh, so that's empathizing, with him and then we can say yes I have similar problems too I know how difficult it is and then um, and then we can ask them uh, uh, do you want to find a solution and then have you found other solution is it helpful and the person says I've tried this and it's helpful to an extent and it's not totally helpful and then we can say can I share with you how it helped me how I've been helped and then we can share how we experience God in our prayer now I have a method of evangelism called experience God evangelism. We pray for people and experience God. So I've I have many experiences of praying for people and they're, they're healed. So I, I can share with them and then are you willing that I pray for you? So we we try to respond. If the person says, No, I'm not willing to try, and then most Christians will say, You have to try. If not you go you won't go to heaven. You, know, you need God right away. But instead, what well, we can do is you respond to his um, lack of interest. We can say, what can we say? If he's not interested, what can we say? I know you're not interested at this point. I know it's maybe this message you think is too far away from you. Um, but do you think God is really that far away from you? You know, do you think if God can help you, do you think uh, it will be very helpful to you? So. We try to open up with what he said. Whatever he said, we try to open up with that key. Whatever people said, we try to open up with that key. When he said, I'm not interested. And then we say, oh, I understand. Many people are not interested in God. I was not interested too. Now, if he listen to you, some people will stop you right away. Depends, that there are different degrees of people that are not interested. So we try to enter that. Yeah, I know. I know, I understand that I, when, in the past I was not interested too. When the Christian told me about Jesus, I was not interested. And, um, uh, and then let the person respond and then respond to him again. So basically, communication is listening and responding to what people said, their needs and their feelings. Okay, do you have any questions? Any questions? Uh, now, this is a big skill to learn. This is a big skill. Yeah. <laughs> um, so we need to practice in the future, in the next few yeah, days. Yes, thank you. You mentioned about uh, in case somebody is not interested at that point, and uh, you, you are trying to uh, relate what they are saying to, uh -huh. to what they are feeling. Right. Um, when do you know to you know say okay let me let me let, let this person be it seems they are completely not interested you know some people will uh, not be interested and even if you try to to say you know you know I understand I, I know that it's, you know you have no interest I was once there but they are completely shut out 
Okay. How do you know when to say, okay, this person is completely shut out, let me just go. Okay. Now, so if I respond... Okay, we'll stop. Uh -huh. Now, I, what I want to do is this, that if uh, the person's not interested, I, I will say, you know, I agree with him. Yes, I know, you know, um, many people are not interested in God. I can understand that. Uh, I know your feelings now. And, um, and see how the person responds. The person says, I don't want to talk about it. And then, and then we know that he's definitely not interested. And then we can say, I can see that you're not interested. It's okay, but I hope you will keep this in your mind and think about it and ask Jesus if he's God. And so I will end with that. But if the person says something else to show that he really has some question, then I will respond to that. So to, to, to find out more, to responding to what he said, at least to let him know that even when we finish, when he is not interested, we know that, you know, I understand your situation and, and it's okay that you're not interested at this point. I hope you would, you know, uh, <coughs> you, uh, you will think about it and find out more. Uh, before you totally turn off, so we uh, we accept that instead of keep talking, keep talking, keep talking. Mm -hmm.